We're Erin and Brandon, a travel couple turned New York City natives. After traveling internationally and domestically for 14 months, we've now settled into our apartment on the Upper East Side of Manhattan. If you missed our last episode, we explored Central Park to share some of the off the beaten path hidden gems we could find. The conservatory gardens get an absolute A plus in my book. Did we find our waterfall? We found it. But it's one of the best views of the skyline. Now we're gearing up for part two. Which shoes did I wear? East one? Oh, the east one. I think that's good. Just wear one of both. Toms, a little less support, but goes with the black. Or a sneak. Give a little action to the bottom footwear. I'm thinking white. Okay. All right, let's go. We ran out of sunlight the other day, so we are heading back in the park to finish up our last two spots today. And the only thing that's changed is I got a new set of wheels. Brandon is way faster than me on his skateboard, and I'm even on an e-bike right now, but here we go. Let's try to catch up. What's up? We're getting married in three weeks, and I just thought he almost was about to get hit by a car. Not cute. I was about to have no more wedding, no more husband. Brandon, tell us what happened. I mean, I kind of almost got hit by a car. It was the car's fault. So we entered the park at 59th Street and it's so crazy how you're in this hustle and bustle of New York City and then you take a few steps into the park and of course, yeah, you could hear the traffic in the background, but you're just totally immersed. Our first stop today is Hallett Nature Sanctuary, which was designed originally by Frederick Law Olmsted and it was reopened in 2003 where students and volunteers have actually been creating trails around this nature sanctuary. So it's not, not that it's hard to find, but it kind of just pops up on you with this beautiful gate. People clearly feed these squirrels because they're coming up to us and like putting their hands out as if we're going to give them food, which I'm definitely not going to, but people clearly do. And they're very There's big. a lot of squirrels, to be honest. Yeah. Get out of here. Okay, 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 okay. Moving on, moving on. This is definitely a bird lover's paradise. A lot of interesting looking birds. Some like shiny neon ones. I don't know a lot about birds, so if you do, please comment below. I think it's really cool because while Central Park feels very natural in a lot of parts, this is like really natural. Like I would fully think that we're just in the woods somewhere, not in the middle of the city. And then you hear a helicopter. And, yeah, and then you hear a helicopter. You kind of see a building poke through, but otherwise it's like very natural, definitely. A really cool spot if you really want to escape to nature and if you want squirrels and birds coming up to you because clearly people feed them. <laughs> Loving this area of the park because you truly like forget where you are for a couple of minutes and then you have a little peekaboo moment where you see the skyscrapers, you see the Plaza Hotel or whatever it is and you're like, oh yeah, I am in New York being surrounded by nature. You could also get really lost here. The trails are very windy and weavy. A lot of beautiful greenery around you. I think this is a cool find. So next we are going to our final spot for this episode, Shakespeare Gardens. So we have made it to our final destination of Shakespeare Garden, which is located near the Ramble and Belvedere Castle, two very popular spots within Central Park. So if you're in that area, maybe come give this garden a check out. So this space is four acres and it is densely populated with 
plants, flowers, herbs that are all mentioned in William Shakespeare's plays or poems. So it's really just completely based around William Shakespeare. <laughs> the name checks out. and he dropped some facts, he dropped some knowledge. Back in the early 1900s, the person who took care of the flower arrangements in the park was very obsessed with William Shakespeare, so he made this beautiful Shakespeare garden, and it kind of has fallen in and out of disrepair during the 1900s, but it's recently been taken care of by the Central Park Conservancy Project, so they've really taken care of it and brought it back to life, and now it's this beautiful garden that we're gonna walk around. they often have productions of Shakespeare's most famous plays right here. So it's fitting that it's right next to Shakespeare Garden. If you enjoyed this episode, go ahead and give it a like. Thanks so much for watching, and we hope that you enjoyed seeing some less known spots in Central Park. I know we definitely did enjoy it, and I feel like we have new spots to show our family and stuff when they come visit us. Anyway, give it a like. It's such a beautiful touch that they've got these little poems of Shakespeare's all throughout that show him referencing the plants that are around the little plaque. So for instance, this one says, where the bees suck, there suck I, in the cowslip's bell I lie. I mean, that's just beautiful from the Tempest. Is that beautiful? <laughs> no, but that's the one I like the most. Where the bees suck, there suck I? <laughs> Why would you say that was beautiful? I feel like there's so many other better ones. Oh, all the other ones were so much better. I just found it funny. Anyway, let's keep walking okay, through it. Okay, let's go.